What's up, everybody? It's your boy HVAC Rowdy, and let's have a talk. How you feeling today? I'm just riding my way to wherever it takes me. Tease in my taste. Can you picture a place where there's peace and grace? I leave the blueprints on my steps you can trace. What's up, everybody? It's your boy HVAC Rowdy. Just want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe to keep up with weekly videos every Thursday. Back to you, Rowdy. What's up, everybody? It's your boy HVAC Rowdy back again with another video. It's just another talking video about something I get asked a lot. Um, a lot of people, you know, DM me and send me messages about, you know, they're getting ready for the EPA. They're nervous and they don't know what to do. And they just get so fumbled up and jumbled up into the big deal of getting your EPA certifications and just doesn't don't want to mess up or they just too scared to even go attempt it because they don't, you know, want to know they want to spend the money to get it and just to fail it and just, you know, be depressed so i figured you know maybe you know i just make a video on some tips and tricks i did for myself to get me prepared for you know the epa i took the epa i want to say it was my final actually my final semester in school i took my epa right before graduation part of the program i took they gave you the epa for free so it was nothing i had to pay for some people do have to pay for it i can't even tell you how much it costs to get your epa but the tests do cost money for certain people if you're not in like a program or nothing. So, you know, for me personally, it was free. We took it in school. I did pass all four of my courses, thankfully. And yeah, I just took it, passed it, and got my um, certificate in the mail like a couple of days later. It took a lot more preparation to get to that point than just coming into class that day and just taking the test. So that's why I made this video, just making sure everybody knows, you know, the best way, my way to take it. First thing first, what is the EPA? EPA is actually an organization of the government in the USA, the Environmental Protection Agency, if I am correct with that. Well, they basically just make sure everything we do in the world, well, at least in America, is environmentally safe, you know, including water, air, soil. I know they do deal with that. Basically, anything that involves the environment, they're going to make sure it's clean, safe, and doesn't kill us <laughs> now epa certification is basically basically it's really just a paperwork to show that you know what you're doing when you mix it with chemicals out here in the field you do mess with refrigerant and refrigerant is a chemical that can harm the world no matter what type of refrigerant it is every refrigerant is technically bad for the environment and it just making sure you're not just a dummy out here just throwing refrigerant in the stuff and just releasing it in the world so when it comes to the testing, there's actually four courses. Um, you got your type one, type two, type three. And actually, I want to say, I forgot what the, was the other one, the intro. I can't remember what the other one was, but there's four courses. Of course, every course you pass, you get a certificate in that type. For me, I remember it was like 25 questions per section. So say you um take just type one, you take those 25 questions, you pass, you get your type one's EPA certified, you take type one and type two, and you pass those two, you're type one and type two EPA certified. Um, if you do type three, you know, you do all four of them and you pass, you actually become universal, which is usually what you want to do is really the main goal of it. You want to be EPA universal. That way you can deal with every type of refrigerant. Each category and type has certain refrigerants you can deal with. So that's why it's always best to just go get your whole universal and just get it over with instead of having to keep going back and forth and back and forth. Now, when it came to taking my EPA, I really had a long time to prepare. Um, starting in school, they tell you it's something you're going to have to get no matter what, and it's best for you to get it sooner than later. Um, just so happened I got mine literally later into the school year. It was pretty It was pretty easy for me personally when I took it. Um, like I said earlier, it was it, it took it was easy that day, but the preparation for it was definitely tough, and so that's why I really just want to go over some things to go over when you're thinking about taking it. One thing I learned was studying. You have to study. I probably kind of remember I had like a like a little study guide that they gave us in school. It's probably about this thick. I want to say it wasn't it wasn't too much paperwork. It was about this thick of just things they go over in the EPA cert certification test, and it was it was. It was a challenge because you really don't know what in those paragraphs. It was like a like front and back page. It's probably about this thick. I'll say probably about 15 pages at most. Uh, front and back of just different just stuff to go over in the type 1 and type 2 and type 3. 
it was crazy, crazy. I remember I looked at it like, man, there's no way I could take this and pass it the first try. And that's why it took me so a long time just to even take it myself. But it was, it wasn't really as much of a challenge. When I say when you need to study, you're gonna have to study it. Don't think about it as in something to where you you in school all year, so you should be able to like ace it. No, what they what the EPA test is is basically could be could be completely different from what your teacher in class is teaching or what the apprenticeship is teaching you or if anybody that you know is teaching you um it changes up it does give you different questions every year so it one thing he could teach you could be completely different from the test coming up in the next year so there's always something you want to study about uh there's study guys online there's practice tests uh i took I think I took probably about 5,000 practice tests before I even took mine. So studying is something you really going to have to do. It's something you're definitely going to have to do for sure. There's, there's no doubt about it. All right, something else I also like to tell people is don't rush. I know a lot of kids. And my, yeah, kids, I mean, they were they were kids. There was probably about, I want to say, we took like a pre-test. And it, there was like kids my age, about 17, 18 taking the pre-test when we first started the semester and just rushing through it and just failing it and just wondering like nah this isn't for me and they would just drop out just to know that it's just, you don't want to rush through it it's something you put your hard work and time into you put your money into for some people and it's just something you want to just take it slow and patiently um i can't remember there was a time limit for my class at least because my class was four hours, and we really just spent the whole day taking it. You know, if you want to come in and take it, take it. So it really wasn't no, you know, you only have like an hour or two hours time frame. It's, you know, you come in, take it, and you just take it how many times you really want to take it until the day's over with. Um, but I, I don't know about anybody else, but that's how it really was for um for me. Um, just, just don't rush through it. I mean, I remember, I think I was easy with type one. was probably the easiest for me. Type two was easy, but type three was was pretty long i i think i sat there the longest probably about 50 minutes i sat there and just going over what to do um it's something you know you can retake you know if you fail a, a section you can always retake a section um i don't know they really charge it to retake a section like i said i was in school so everything was already paid for but for me personally in school they even if you fill a section, you can just come in and just redo it and literally do it that day. You probably can give it like a 10-minute break and just come back in. I know during my course of in class taking the test, there was people who finished before me and would fill a, a type. You know, tell the instructor. The instructor would be like, all right, take a 10-minute break. You know, go to the bathroom with some water, eat something, come back. We can just redo that, that type real quickly. So it's something you really don't want to rush. You know, you want to take your time. Cause at the end of the day, this is what you've really been working for. To be honest with you, you, this is this is what will get you into the field. It's kind of like the gatekeeper if you really think about it. Um, without this, you're really not gonna get a job. It's something you're definitely gonna need. So you really want to take your time and focus and make sure you get the certifi certification. Without the certification, you don't need to have to worry about anything else because. You don't, you know, I'm EPA certified, so there's really no point in getting no other certification before then. So you want to take your time, don't rush it, go over the questions. If you want to even go over the test again, you know, double check every answer, do that. I suggest it. Um, you want to make sure you, you got it right because there's nothing like going through a test, find out you got certain things wrong, and you just be exhausted. Like, man, how did I get this wrong? How did I get this wrong? I thought this was right. Instead of just going over it and double checking and just making sure everything you put in there is right. Another thing I also tell people is it's okay to fail. Um, a lot of people come to me and be like, I'm scared to f I might fail it. Um, what happens if I fail it? Will I get the opportunity? Or if I fail it, maybe it's not just for me. Maybe this is not the trade for me if I fail it. I just tell them, man, it's okay, it's okay to fail. I mean, this this test isn't supposed to be for anybody. It's a reason why they make you have to take it to get certified. It's for to make sure you know what you're doing and just to make sure only the best of the best is out here becoming technicians. Like I said in my earlier, I know tons of people that failed during the actual and the pre-test and just came back and did it and got it over with. Um, failing isn't that bad. Now, if you're out here failing about 10 times in a row, you know, maybe you probably want to get a new, <laughs> new field.
if you just, you know, the first time you take it, you fail, that's okay. You know, you fall off a bike, you get back up and ride again. That's how I, I see it. If I if I came into the test, I, I was really worrying about it for myself. If I would fail it, and I just thought to myself, if I fail it, what is going to happen? And I just told myself, you know what, don't even think about it. It's not going to happen. You know, I'm going to go in here, I'm going to pass it, and thankfully I did. But if I did fail it, I probably would have been disappointed, a little bit sad, but I would have known all right, this is the section I fell on. Let's get back to work and let's come back in about 10, five minutes and let's get this over with and redo it. So, you know, failing isn't the end of everything. You know, you're going to fail, to be honest with you. I think at least about 15 of us took it. I'm pretty sure about 13 of us fell, failed it. At least a section I had to retake it. I think it was just me and about two other people who just luckily just passed through it. And I mean, luckily, it was... There was some some questions on there. I came a lot to you. I just luckily <laughs> got correct. So it's it's not something that you're gonna just ease through and breeze through and get hundred percent. So you're gonna get about seventies and eighties and nineties on on some of these sections, and which is not bad. Probably my last one is it's not the end. Just because you're EPA certified doesn't make your job complete. Um, there's way a thousand more certifications you have to get. Well, you don't have to get, but it's best to get. There's like the Nate. There's so many other certifications you can get and just move up in the career. I mean, you a lot of people just think you get the EPA and you're just good for the rest of your life. But actually, there's some, some jobs that won't even just take the EPA. They have to take you to be like Nate certified. And it's, it's something you really have to work on. I know myself, I'm working on getting my my Nate right now and it's it's been a journey i probably started about planning and studying for it for about four or five months now so it's something you definitely don't want to just get comfortable with just because you got your epa doesn't mean you know like i said it's it's over with you there's so many certifications i took it even before i took my epa i had probably took about five six other certifications before then and got it certified in those it wasn't nothing as crazy as the epa but there was certification tests I had to take, and they looked good on the resume for sure. I know you, you stack up probably about five <laughs> certifications. You, you, the dude who's hiring you probably don't know half of them, but he just knows you're certified in it, so it, and, it's, and it looks good. So it's, that's not the only certification you're going to need. You're going to need a little bit more, at least in my, my opinion. And that's just it for the video for today, guys. That's just my take on the EPA exam. Um, Like I said, guys, man, don't. Don't think too hard on it. You know, it's it's something you want to be happy about, especially after you're getting it. It's something you want to celebrate about. For me, when I know when I got certified, I, I walked out my school and just was so, like, amazed and joyful of myself because it's just, like I said, it's something, something you work hard for and just appreciate. So, it's, it's you know, don't stress about it too much. Don't worry. Don't overthink it. You know, just go in there and be prepared and just take it. Thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure you like and subscribe to keep up with videos every Thursday. I'm going to try. Just make sure you follow and like on all my social medias. Uh, Instagram, Twitter. I do Twitch. Keep in touch. Thanks, everybody. Peace.